Okay, so now we are here and now we are revealing this journey that started in 2009, that starts in the, this exhibition from the entrance till now. And if we say that it started in Belgrade in 2009, uh, I was totally on my own. I didn't have an exhibition or a institution that I worked with. So I decided to make another kind of guiding through Belgrade that will um, reveal other kind of history that is not part of public, of public, um, of public knowledge or of public history, something that is not, that still remains invisible or just, you know, in history books. And something also that is being, let's say, erased from the history. So what happened actually is that I was choosing different sites in Belgrade where anti-fascist struggle was happening but they were, for me it was important that this um, uh, important, uh, let's say, actions in Belgrade against the occupation, the Nazi occupation in the Second World War uh, was successful. So actually there were just five places in Belgrade and all of these five places were not, uh, they were not, um, marked, they, were, they had, didn't have any memory and there was no public uh, idea about this. Uh, so I went through all these places, but I chose to go with a weapon that was Kalashnikov and actually with the white plastic bag. And um, my idea was actually uh, to try to discuss this split and this actually uh, current condition and the change of the understanding of the war. Because till September 11th, we had this idea of Clausewitz that war is, a, is a actually politics by armed means. And now after September 11th, we had a totally different understanding which is actually uh, this binary situation of a like split on terrorists and anti-terrorists. So the whole permanent war is based on this, that um, many, let's say, states, religious groups, individuals are out of law and are declared as terrorists and actually uh, the whole war is being, so today it is very complex and it started, you know, having another digital, let's say, um, layer over, over the system of securization and, uh, and everything that goes with this, also the way people were uh, killed or how the wars are waged. So I wanted just to start this idea are we able today to think about, the, about violence uh, in a, with, a different, with a different idea that actually historically violence had, could have had or had also its, its positive means that it was some kind of well, Sorry, I have to, I have to uh, stop. <laughs> so you're now recording this, <laughs> no. <laughs> huh? uh, but it makes sense what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know it makes sense, but I was somehow uh, gone because I was thinking how it was good to connect this with this as I connected uh, uh, at the time of the... It would be also super nice to just elaborate a little bit more on this, this the notion of violence and yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Um, so this idea to think about violence, uh, not from the perspective of uh, retrospective normalization, which means if we had moments in the history when violence from the beginning, let's say we could say, I don't know, Spanish Civil War, revolutions all over, colonial uh, countries all over the world that, um, that really started 
to, 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 to function in a global way that was actually connected to the non-aligned movement uh, that is also an important part of this work. Uh, and actually to think about violence not like being retrospectively normalized to today's understanding of violence in this binary, uh, let's say binary defined as terrorist and anti-terrorist, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mm, yeah, and the way how this war is being defined. Um, so, so my idea was actually to, to try to think, is it possible to have another kind of uh, political option? And what if I would take this weapon of the subjugated, which is actually a Kalashnikov in this moment, and just walk through the streets, and also as a woman who also carries some, I don't know, food, home. Mm -hmm. And taking this weapon not as a threat, you know, but holding it totally like, I don't know, like a purse, and together with this, uh, I don't know, grocery bag. So, uh, and, and think about that, you know, how, um, you know, how the city and how uh, will we'll respond to this, you know, and how uh, past buyers, uh, what will happen actually. You know, I was in three different cities. Yeah. Uh, one was Belgrade, there was, there was Copenhagen and there was Rome. In oh, Belgrade, yeah. yeah. In Belgrade, there was no reaction. So there were maybe two people, there were kids looking at this, teenagers, and there was one woman who was really concerned. And when I made the break and I was sitting on the, at the bench, so I was doing this for two months, you know. I was sitting on a bench and I was talking uh, to some guy who was next to me and I told him, don't worry, it is actually a replica. Uh, and he said, I'm not worried, I hold the real Kalashnikov for 156 days. So, you know, in Serbia, who actually uh, rejects the idea that, we're, that politically that they were part of the war and that they were waging a war all over Yugoslavia, so this is, so Serbia for, you know, uh, like publicly, uh, declares that were, they were not part of the war. But with this weapon, I think this weapon was so important uh, and there was no citizen that was not involved with this. As you have somebody in the family or you were part of this, like willingly or unwillingly, or you had left the country because of this. So there were many, many. And this is some kind of denial of the people who are who are in the city to look at this as a, you know, as a real thing. Yeah. And then to see a woman who has a weapon where the role of the woman so much changed from the Second World War, where in this last war in Yugoslavia, the role of woman was more in the media, you know, entertaining, and men, they were in the war. Mm -hmm. So this was some kind or, or women were prisoners and they were raped. So this was the role of the woman. So it was impossible to see the woman, you know, with the gun. So, so yes, and I don't know, in Copenhagen, there was no reaction at all. There was just one police once went like next to me and there was just one woman in this area, um, which is called Vesbro in Copenhagen, where mostly immigrants and, I don't know, prostitutes and... So she was very concerned and she was very worried about this weapon. You also did it there for a long time period? No, I have done this for two days mm -hmm. there yeah. and I had no permission and it was a real weapon. Mm -hmm. But in Rome, it was like you could feel people were so interested. What is this? What, what am I doing? They went with me together. So it was for, there was for two, three days and it was very, so 
people on the streets, like past buyers, they were really active. So this was an interesting, let's say, experience. Hmm? No, actually, no. But it was not so long, you know. So, so here, after let's say ten years, it was really hard. I mean, I feared. I had. I had. I was afraid actually to do this. After all this process that that I went through, that was actually, um, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I, I have just to say, so here in Vienna I was invited from two institutions, from Casino Burg and from Kunsthalle Wien, to do this work again. And, but actually very soon they said, sorry, we cannot support you and you have to do this work. I mean, you have to do something else. And I said, of course, I'm going to do this, but I want to find a way how I'm going to do this. So I tried actually to, to work with, um, um, I applied, oh, I, 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 I cannot do this now. I need more audience here, you know, in order to be triggered to say something. Um, so I tried, I, 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 I bought, I actually, um, I was trying different, I was trying to find a real weapon and to go to inform pol police, to, you know, but then you see actually, and this is interesting in this work, because through this you see how states actually relate and how, um, how laws and regulations yeah. are working with this notion of violence and with the system of securitization, you know. So here, a lot of things were in private, you know. There was more about talking to each other than sending emails and having some papers that we could share uh, around this. So at the end, it was very, like, also the law changed meanwhile, because in, 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 in December 14, there is a no law, there is a new law actually that you cannot go on the streets mm -hmm. with, uh, even with the replica. I think it would be changed. I think this is now just a historical moment, you know. Yeah. This is just a moment that we live in that actually does not... It is part of representation. Also, when we think about institutions, it can be shown, you know, as an artwork in the space, but just as a representation, just in the yeah. form of an image. It cannot happen in real, you know, even it is art. Yeah, you know what is the problem? And this is really something now that is a big issue. The issue is actually that uh, uh, for replica, you're immediately like three years. Three years. Can you hear this? Uh -huh, yeah. Three years. No, I was just, I was just like, um, I heard you, but I was astonished. Yeah, three years, and actually for a real weapon, it's 10 years. It was 10 years. I don't know how much is it now. So it is actually, uh, and kids are not allowed to play with the guns on the street. I mean, not with the toys. Mm. And this big change, for example, in this shop, I was there for two hours actually trying to understand they're selling weapons and they're selling toys. So toys look so much as real weapons and real weapons look like toys. They're mostly built out of plastic, they're transparent, they're in different colors that are, and they have some kind of a, like, you know, they're styled in a different way that they look like, not so seriously, you know, you don't ha you're not afraid when you look at it. And toys look much more like weapons. Mm -hmm. And this is this shift that I would like to understand what it means, because it means something, this is like obvious. So what I say, we know that things are much more serious than this, but this small, let's say, try, you know, to do a work that I was doing like nine years ago, all over Europe, not even being, you know, stopped by anybody. Mm -hmm. Now it is yeah. completely impossible. I even cannot imagine this. You know, I was in the city with this, because this was the only way when I bought. So here you have this, uh, let's say, shop where I 
bought, where I bought a toy. I couldn't buy, buy a toy because I'm not European citizen, so I had to find somebody who was willing to do it for, to do it for me. They took all the documents of, of this guy, but they didn't give us a receipt, they didn't give us a box. They archived his name, but they didn't give us receipt or anything. So it was like, and we had to buy in cash. So, yeah, so this is like kind of a, kind of a, you know, let's say really, and then they say, it said, okay, you can go just with this, with this, uh, I don't know, black um, plastic bag, which is actually forbidden today as well. You know, plastic bags are not allowed yeah. anymore. But this was the only way uh, we could go out with this. Yeah, yeah it is. And this is really, uh, this merge is happening now somehow very firmly. Yeah. And, uh, and also through, through, through video games, you know, and through this, as you're mentioning now, how the real actually also remind, re looks like video games and it's the video games game. are... Exactly, and, and they are understood also in this way, and this is somehow, and then I, I, was, I was in the city having this, and I felt the fear for the first time. And then I was thinking, okay, let us think, how, let us think now about history and the way, and, and the way um, violence was taught historically, and take it out, to try to take it out of this retrospective normalization, you know, going back to the history, taking part of the history and bringing it today, as it is usually done, being normalized to today's understanding of violence, which is very much based actually that we are living in a world of like uh, where the wars are like being waged everywhere and the violence is present and each you know moments of our life um, but <laughs> uh, actually we are not allowed to speak about this and to think about in another way just as, than as a threat you know so violence is equal threat so it is not possible to think about violence as liberation as a way to get liberty. So I wanted to go back actually to 1961 and to mid of 50s when actually the concept of the non-aligned movement started and when in 61 in Belgrade in September 25 people who were members of this new movement first of all, met in Belgrade uh, and declared this movement as a starting point for their... Uh, they didn't want to be involved in Warsaw Pact or in NATO, so they said, we want to be independent and we are non-aligned in this Cold War uh, binary situation. We are again in this binary situation, but in this moment there was this idea that the majority of the world that is being subjugated from very few countries that had the power because they were either their co former colonies or current co co or, or, contempt or colonies at that time. So the idea to start a war, the liberation war, the anti-colonial war was for, their, for them an idea to get the peace. So they wrote this wonderful letter to Kennedy and Khrushchev where they were saying at this conference, they were saying, okay, we are now living in the time of the Cold War and the nuclear threat becomes a huge issue. So we are really concerned about the future of the planet and we would like to discuss this and we want to... to mm, and we, and, and, yeah. And we want to ask you to, to somehow stop this, you know, uh, competition uh, and let us think in different ways. But at the same time, we are going to start 
uh, anti-colonial wars in our own countries because we don't want to be colonists anymore. So we are starting this, we are starting the war, but this is the war for peace. And we are concerned about peace, also the peace that doesn't that is in threat in this moment. And you know, the fact that we, we made a re, like a lot of research around this because we were preparing for this performance also in, and this is also part of this work. And actually the fact that in, uh, in, in Austria you have um, one million weapons are in possession of 304,000 people and there are two million weapons that are in possession of anonymous people, mm -hmm. so we don't know. And it's growing each year. And it's growing. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then you have Glock, that is the biggest ever, you know, uh, production of these small weapons, so hand weapons, I, I don't know, pistols, yeah. uh, which is, and then the, the, the relation of the, you know, who can buy, who not, how you, you know, and there is also this part which is a part of the uh, Austrian constitution that actually also opposes the idea that you can produce weapon and sell weapon and you know. So this is also an interesting moment to, uh, to think about this. Uh, uh, yeah, and what I wanted to tell actually, uh, not to tell, but when you said this, uh, actually, what is interesting for me, thinking about the non-aligned movement, is what would today, you know, in this condition of, of really complex, um, really complex division and the ways how the world is being secured, and this division of, you know, terrorism and anti-terrorism, which is really now everywhere in each, you know, it is, it is a new fabric around the, the globe. Um, so, you know, who are those who are in majority and being threatened, you know? And is there any kind of international, you know, um, context that can bring people out of, you know, out of this particularized, you know, uh, situation that we are living this work operates still with this, you know, very simple uh, 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 tools, you know, or simple mechanism, you know. I am an artist and I would like to, you know, somehow to ask for a weapon and I want to bring this in the, in the, in the so-called public space, you know. So this is a very simple request. Then it, this impacts all the securization, you know, how regulation and laws are working with the idea that you ask for automatic weapon, which is actually impossible to have as a regular citizen, especially as a non-European, and then you ask for a fake gun, and it is even like less <laughs> possible, because this is also not possible, so, so yes.